Hi, this is Peter at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 165, I believe. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up our project. And I've gone ahead and you know, I've got all my torso parts added, and I've come through and I've added a bunch of others. Uh, I want to keep working on the tor torso part. Uh, let's start creating the GUI we're going to be using to swap our torso uh, materials around. And of course, you can place them anywhere you want in the screen. Uh, I'm just going to keep working my way up for now. And this time, uh, for controls, I'm going to want to have the greater than, less than arrows. And in the middle, I'll display uh, the the name, or at least the, the number of that texture in there, right? And of course, we'll want to get rid of these uh, identifiers when the we're integrating it into our player generation scene, or at least the character generation scene. Uh, but for now, it's very helpful to be able to see, you know, what what uh, items aren't exactly fitting right. Uh, so let's open up Mono Develop, and I'm going to head over to well, we can close the tech leaks, our changing room, and I'm going to go ahead and create a function that displays uh, the elements we want. So I'll make it private. It does not return anything. I'm going to call it change material GUI. And here's our greater than less than arrows. We can just actually cut and paste those in already. Now we'll want to obviously modify them. Uh, we don't want to rotate. So we'll just get rid of that. And I'm just going to put these curly braces here at the bottom. And I'm going to want to change where the position. I believe the last one was 70. Uh, and that was the weapon one. So let's take a look here. Yes, it was minus 70. So we'll go up another 35, which will be 105. And I'm also going to want a box to be displayed in the middle. So we'll just add that now. And this box, I wanted to display the actual number of the element we're on. So I don't want it in the middle. And I'm actually just going to cut and paste. I will look for one of the buttons and we'll just cut and paste the code from there. Or at least for our rec size. Let's keep everything fairly consistent. And of course, we'll have to move it to 105. And for now, I'm just going to put a couple X's in here. And let's just start it up to make sure that everything's positioned right. And, well, we didn't actually make a call to that function in our GUI to display it. Uh, so let me go put a space there, and I'm actually just going to cut and paste this in here. And now let's go try it. So there we go, we have our greater than less than buttons. They obviously don't do anything yet, and we have a display. That's what we wanted. So let's go up to the top. And up here where we're holding our weapon index, let's also start keeping track of the index that we're at for whatever material that we're trying to change. Since I'm going to start working on the torso itself, I want to keep an index of uh, where we are in this array here. So let's go in and I'm going to make a private int and I'm just going to call this torso material index. And I started off at zero as default. And since we have the variable now, we can actually come down here and in our box. I'll just paste that in and we'll do the two string. So let's fire it up. And now we see what index we're at. Now let's get these little buttons here working. Uh, so we're going to come down here and create another function. 
And of course it'll be private, does not return anything, and we're actually just going to call this one change material. Actually, let's be a little more descriptive. Let's be let's change mesh material. And for now, we're not going to take any parameters. And this is actually going to be called from up here. So when they hit the less than button, what we're going to want to do is take this variable and decrement it by one. And likewise down here, we'll want to paste this variable in. Uh, just let me go cut and paste it again. And instead of decreasing it, since we're going up, we'll want to increase it. And then we're going to call this function. And I'll just cut and paste this function name in down here. And when we get down here, the first thing we're going to want to do is check to make sure that the bounds of uh, where this area is or where this variable is in the area does not, you know, go below the the minimum value or above the max value. So we're going to say if torso material index is greater than, and then we'll want to get a reference to our character assets manager and our torso material. So we know that we've called our character asset manager CA and the torso material. So we'll just grab the length property and we'll want to subtract one from it because as I said before, the length is always one greater than the number, uh, the, the highest number of the index in there. So if you have uh, 10 materials in there, your length is, well, 10, but the it'll be from 0 to 9. So just make sure that you put the negative 1 in there. So if it is greater than the length, we're just going to wrap it. So we'll just say torsal material index is equal to 0. And then of course we're going to do an else if, uh, and we're going to say if the torso material index is less than zero, then we're going to say our torso material index is equal to, so basically if we've gone off the other end, the small end, we're actually going to make it equal to the length, minus one. So let's save that off. We'll go into Unity and we'll take a look. It's not actually going to change the material yet, but the counter should work and we have no errors. So this here should at least change for us now. And it looks like I've copied the repeat button instead of the button. So I'll just come in and sure enough, we have the repeat button, which we did not want. But it's an easy enough fix. We'll just get rid of the repeat part. We'll save it back off. We'll head back into our game and we'll start it up and there we go as you see it goes up uh, let's go down this way as you can see when we're at zero it rolls it goes to 25 and of course from 25 it goes to zero uh, let me just take a quick peek here and there are 25 of them so everything seems to be working well and if you notice here the size is six or sorry 26 so everything's working right uh, let's head back in and actually start trying to change some materials here. So we're at the end here. What we're going to do is want to get the index of our torso on our character. So let's uh, take a look at the muscular male, we'll look at the mush, or the mesh. And let me see, the torso is right here. So this is going to be index 0, index 1, index 2. So naturally I would want to do something like PC dot and I forget what I called it already. Uh, character material mesh. So PC dot character material mesh. Then I'd want to get the renderer. And this is an array, so you would want to grab materials or shared materials. And you would normally just grab the index and assign it the index in here that we, we want. So we'll just cut and paste this. And of course, we're going to pass it in this one, this value here. 
and let's save that off and we'll come back into our game and we'll start it up and I'm going to leave it unmaximized this time. I'm going to try to move this over a bit to get a bit more room. Uh, let's go ahead and actually turn off our detect leak so we can see a little bit better and let's start it up and it starts off at zero but you notice as we're changing it's not actually changing and we can go in and throw in a debug statement and let's do it down here and we're going to say uh, wearing and we'll pass in this value and then we'll say should be wearing and we'll pass in this value and you'll notice that the values are actually correct but it's not changing so we'll just start it up and I'll hit clear and and we actually should actually output the names <laughs> so we'll just do name and we'll add the name back here of this material just so our debug log statements a little bit more understandable so we'll start this back up and we're going to hit clear when it starts and when we try to change material, we'll notice that uh, we're wearing, uh, if we actually select our character here, let me just scroll around a bit. We'll select him. Uh, you have to move in a little bit more. I'm having trouble clicking him. And it says that we're wearing the 001 body instance. And we should be wearing the 02 body. And of course, if we try to change again, we'll notice that it's not changing even though we're assigning the right value to it. This actually threw me for a loop for a bit. What I found out was that when you have an array of materials on something, uh, for some reason you can drag and drop materials in, but through code you can't just assign one value. What we have to do is actually take all the values in here, store them into another array, and then change the one you want in that array, and then reassign the whole array of materials back in again. So we're going to do that up here. So we're just going to say material and this is an array and I'm just going to call it mats. And it's going to be equal to this here, except we're not going to grab number two. We're just going to grab all the materials and I'm going to throw another debug log out here just to show you the size to make sure that we're getting them all and I'm just gonna say mats.length so we'll let that save off there should be no errors we'll clear it start it back up I'll clear it one more time and when we start we'll notice that it's going okay you know there's, there's five materials and of course it's still not changing because we haven't even tried uh, so what we're going to do down here is just have a for loop and of course just generic for loop like we've done about a million times already and we'll say as long as CNT is less than uh, we're just going to take the length of this one and then increase it now I've actually got this on the wrong line I want it above that and all we're gonna do is assign it into mats so mats CNT is equal to uh, let's grab this here again well actually we can just grab it down here because we already have the index part set up and instead of grabbing just two we'll grab the index in that material and then down here we're going to want to change the second one so mats two is equal to and this is the new material we're trying to put in so i'm just going to cut that out paste it in 
and then we're going to assign mats right into our materials. So let's save that off. We're going to head back in. I'm going to hit clear. And we'll start it back up. I uh, get to hit clear again. And this time when we go to change, we notice we're getting the change. And everything looks fine, right? And the armor keeps going through. Uh, we can go backwards, get more flashy armor. Uh, but now let's turn on our debug or our detect leaks. And I'm going to go full screen for this. Uh, just a little bit more room for all the text, and you should be able to read it a little bit better. And keep an eye on the materials as we go through. It keeps going up. And the reason is that when we replace uh, the the torso material, uh, we still actually have the old torso material floating around. And there's a couple of ways we can get rid of that. You know, right at the bottom of the function, I'm actually going to comment this line out now because we know it's it's working. You can come down and use the resources dot unload unused assets and if we start it back up you'll notice that the first time we click uh, if you just pay attention to all the numbers here you might want to rewind and take a look but the first time we click you know everything changes and then each time we click after that it no longer keeps increasing our game objects or sorry our materials so it is getting rid of the right one, but this is kind of like trying to kill an ant with a sledgehammer. And sometimes if you can't figure out exactly what is being leaked or where it's being leaked, uh, you can use this, but up here we actually do know what is being leaked. So what we're going to say is destroy immediate. Uh, we've used destroy before, which will destroy the object, you know, on the next convenient uh, time. How this destroy immediately, well actually do destroy it immediately. And what we're going to want to destroy is the old material that we were using. And that was at index 2. So let's save this off. And we got no errors and I'll probably have to clear again. Uh, but let's try it out. Uh, so we're at 124 materials, so we'll start it up. It goes to 128, but then it stops. And you notice it, it doesn't go up anymore. Uh, we're getting close to the 20 minute mark, so I'm going to call this one done. But before I go, I'm going to give you a little bit of an assignment. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll head back into Mono Develop. And we notice that, actually, if we look in Unity, uh, changing all these other materials uh, should be pretty much the exact same. We have an array that holds all of the materials and we already know where it has to go and we've created a function that is capable of changing a material and we've even got a little bit of a GUI set up to change the material or to allow us to change the material but for an assignment before you start the next uh, tutorial, uh, take a minute and try to actually reconstruct this method so that we can change any of our materials with just this one method. So when we go to change the legs, uh, we don't have to create a whole new method just to change the legs because really all we're doing is the exact same thing uh, except we're going through a different array. Anyway, I hope you give it a shot before the next tutorial, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.